My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You will never lack anything in your life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He will prepare a table before you. In the presence of your enemy. He will anoint your head. Your cup will run over. Running over. Running over. Running over. The jobless will have job. The one that doesn't have anything to do, a job is coming your way in Jesus' name. He will feed the hungry. He will satisfy your want. Because Jesus is your provider. And when you say, yes, Lord, I take the old step. And I accept Jesus as my provider. Tonight, you'll find everything will change. Because every need of your life will be supplied. Number seven, Jesus is your partner throughout life. You have been feeling lonely? Loneliness is crying in you. You feel alone in the battles of life. You feel all alone in the challenges of life. And Jesus said, I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. And he says, can I go along with you? Can I take your hand and lead you through life? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be your partner in life. In the valley, I'll be with you. On the mountain, I'll be with you. In difficulty, I'll be with you. In the problem, I'll be with you. Nothing will ever come to your life that will destroy you again. Because Jesus Christ, who bought life, and he bought abundant life, he will be your partner throughout life. That's why the Lord is telling you to take that first step, accept. That's how to have the gift of God. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. And it's as simple as A, B, C. A, accept. B, Believe. The Lord is telling us that as you are moving on from A to B, you are getting nearer. I said you are getting nearer. And you are going to get the gift tonight in Jesus' name. B. Believe. As the word of God comes to you. And the Lord is telling you, I want to carry your load. I want to carry your body. I want to help you. Whatever problem you have, Christ is a specialist in solving problems. That's why when one man came to Jesus and he brought his epileptic boy, he brought that boy to the disciples and he could not do anything. Christ had been to the Mount of Transfiguration. And Jesus Christ came back. And then he saw the people. And he saw this father. A sorrowful father. A sad father. A dejected father. A depressed father. A discouraged man. He came to Jesus. Put tears in his eyes. See my only son. Sometimes the evil spirit. Will throw him into the water. Sometimes will throw him into the fire. And he said, if you can do anything, please help us. And Jesus said, if you can believe. 
all things are possible for him who believes. He calls you to believe. When you believe on him, that you can save. What the moment you believe, it saves you. When you believe that you can heal, the moment you believe, he heals you. When you believe that you will deliver, the moment you believe, he delivers you. When you believe he can liberate, the moment you believe, he liberates you. The moment you believe he will protect you. And that no curse, no yoke, no power of Satan will touch you anymore. His umbrella of protection will come upon you. Because the moment you believe, it is done. For you believe that he will provide for your need. The moment you believe, it is done. I want you to believe that now you are not alone. I am not alone. I am not alone. Jesus is walking with me. I am not alone. When you believe that he's your partner through life, a new strength in partnership will come to you. And whatever the challenge of your life, you understand, he will take you through. Pregnant woman over there, afraid what's going to happen when I'm going to deliver. Because you've been having this terrible dream, and there is fear in your heart. Maybe I will die when I will deliver. Jesus will be your partner. On that day of delivery, he will take the delivery himself. And there is no fear of death for your child and for you as the mother. All you have to do is to accept and to believe that Jesus is now your partner throughout life. A. Accept. B. Believe. You see Paul and Silas were in the Philippian jail. And as they were in the Philippian jail, that's the jail, the prison in Philippi. Then a miracle happened. And the prison doors were opened. In fact, while they were praising the Lord, the foundations of the prison were shaking. And then eventually, everyone's bands were lost. And the Philippine jailer wanted to kill himself. Thinking that all those prisoners have run away. And Paul cried out, We are here, don't kill yourself. And then the man ran in. And he took the light. And then he saw Paul. And he saw Silas. And he said, Sirs, what shall I do to be saved? I want salvation. The kind of salvation you have. That makes you sing in the prison. The kind of salvation you have. That makes you happy in the dungeon. The kind of salvation you have. That makes you feel you are not alone. That Jesus is with you. That he is your savior. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. He is your liberator. He is your protector. He is your provider. He is your partner. That kind of salvation you have. What shall I do to be saved? And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. And that's what I come to tell you tonight. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You are believing tonight. You are becoming a believer tonight. You are a believer tonight. As you go out of this crusade tonight, you are going as a believer. You are going as a believer. Because you are believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. A. Accept. B. Believe. You know when Jesus came to this world, He went about preaching to the people. And in Mark chapter 1, verse 14, verse 15, He said, The time has come. The kingdom of 
God has come to you. And he says, Repent ye and believe the gospel. He calls upon you to repent. Turn away, get away from Satan. He will kill you. He will destroy you. The thief comes not but for to steal. And to kill. And to destroy. That's why it says, repent. That simply means turn away from Satan. Turn away from your sin. Because your sin will tie you to the devil. Sin is like a rope. That ties sinners to Satan. Sin is like a magnet. That attracts Satan and the works of the devil to the sinner. Sin is like a gum. Like a glue. That gums and glues and attaches evil to the sinner. That's why Jesus said, Repent ye. Turn away from your sin. Break the relationship between you and Satan and sin. Repent ye and believe the gospel. And the moment you believe, it will be unto you according to your faith. Tonight you are going to believe. Tonight you are going to believe. Because the Bible tells us with the heart you believe and with the mouth confession is made. A accept. B believe. C confess. You see, when you come to the Lord, you have to confess. And it is that confession that completes the cycle of A, B, C. And when you make that confession, a change will happen in your life. Can I remind you? Have you heard of the story of Simon Peter before? He was at the riverside. And they had been laboring all the night and he caught nothing. And then Jesus spoke to him. And he said, throw your net there. And he threw the net there. And he caught a lot of fish. And then he came to Christ. Confession. Depart from me, O Lord, I am a sinful man. It is that confession that brings you into the gift of life, eternal life, abundance. That's why we're told in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. He that covereth a sin shall not prosper. But you so confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You come to the Lord. You know he's your savior. I accept. You know he's going to save you today. I believe. Then you want to make a confession with your mouth. And then you confess your sin. And you tell the Lord. I'm a sinful man, O oh Lord. But what if you are looking for a job? You are a driver. And you go to a company. And say, I am a driver. And they are all looking at you. Because they know there are many kinds of drivers. You didn't mention the kind of vehicle you drive. I want job. I am a driver. They don't know whether they have job for you or not. Because they don't know whether the kind of vehicle they have is the type you know how to drive. I am a driver. I drive a car. Aha. Uh -huh. They will listen to you now. I drive a truck. Uh -huh. They will listen to you now. This is the kind of vehicle I drive. Just to say I am a sinner is not enough. You steal? Tell the Lord. You fight? Tell the Lord. You commit adultery? Tell the Lord. 
your secret court. Tell the Lord what, I, what is it that makes you a sinner. Just to say, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, it's not enough. Tell the Lord how it is. That is the confession he requires from you. He that confesses and forsaketh is sin. Shall have the mercy of God. You remember John, First John, chapter one, verse nine. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A accept, B believe. C. Confess. When you come to that point and you confess to the Lord and you tell Him what you have done wrong and you're looking for mercy from the Lord who came to give us salvation. That's when the salvation will become yours and the healing will become yours and the deliverance will become yours. And the liberation will become yours. And the protection will become yours. And the provision will become yours. And the partnership will become yours. A. Accept. B. Believe. C. Confess. And when you have confessed your sin, then you move further a little bit. And you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That if you will believe with your heart. And confess with your mouth. That God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. 